Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the damn day nine daily. It's daily number 609 where we learn to be a better gamer. I don't even say the date. Ah, oh, it's Wednesday, June 17th, 2013. I am in a gr grandastic mood. Let me tell you a story about combining words. <laughs> I am in a fantastic mood. I am in a grand mood. And somehow we get grandastic. That's great. Um, just now, literally, Minigun took out Apocalypse to be one of the few American players advancing in the WCS NA, which is being slaughtered apart by the Koreans. But of course, Minigun joins the likes of players like Scarlet, <gasps> also advancing through over Korean player. I said June 17th. It's July 17th. I'm so mind blown. Big shout out to Chad motherfucking Jones for clinching the win uh, and to Root Gaming for their brand new gaming house. Clearly paying off. Let's drink some liquid. In today's daily, we are going to deal with you poor, sad, pathetic, nerfed Terran players. Oh, my Halbats! They were totally unfair and now I no longer have them. Urgh. I actually don't think they were violently unfair before, but I think it, it's a very reasonable decision from Blizzard to sort of pull back on the damage. But where does that leave most Terran players now? The composition shifted heavily towards the Hellbat in the mid-game. Marauder Hellbat, we looked at a couple dailies on that, analyzed Innovation's play as well as 4GG's, and that really was the norm in the matchup. I'm like really thirsty. Ah. So what is a Terran player to do? In this daily, what we're going to do is look at uh, a best of three between Supernova and Trap from the WCS Korea round of 16. Trap's been looking amazing in the team league, and of course in WCS, making it to the round of 16. Um, and Supernova does some really weird stuff, just nutty, crazy, odd, weird things. So we're going to talk about it, because you poor nerfed Terran players are scrambling to find some substitute for the once where upon a time Hellbat was a thing. I don't know, that sentence became not a sentence midway through, I tried to roll with it. Of course, it's Friday, I'm going to be playing the Swapper and Rogue Legacy, because I'm in a platformer mood, I love the platformers, fun day Monday for next week, you may only expand every 10 minutes. So you're going to be low econ, you got to attack, you got to be aggressive, you got to be creative. Submit those to Monday at day9.tv. Now, to begin this daily, Rather than jump straight into the Supernova games, I wanted to take a look at a nice, calm, chill, relaxed, standard Terran vs. Protoss. We're going to watch it from both players' point of view. This will set the stage for what Supernova's doing that's going to make it very clever. Now, who do we begin with, Alicia or MVP? The more important timings for us to know today will be the Protoss timings, because any move we make is based off what the Protoss can and can't do. But that's okay, let's begin with the Terran ones, just so we can see how Terrans are kind of approaching the matchup. And of course, I, I chose two players who are not slouches. Look at that. Turning the sound on right at the beginning of the daily. How unheard of. So, MVP is going to do, oh, what a standard play in this game. The way that most, um, the way that most Terran players are approaching this matchup is get an early expand up in some way, whether it be just taking it right away or, you know, throwing down a reactor, then expanding. So this is really the step one that Terran players do. Because there's just not that much that Protoss can kill us with early. Just Zealots, or just a Zealot, some number of Stalkers, and, you know, maybe that Mothership core will swing in, but Marines are more than adequate to defend this, and we send out some sort of Scout. So again, step one for 99% of Terran standard play is get up that damn expansion. Next, we have one of two options. One is to sit passively and build up until Medivax. The other is to be aggressive, a little bit, before Medivacs. This type of aggression that we see out of Terran players has a tendency to strike between, um, by the way, if you're expanding, right? I know that there's like one base crazy timings. We're, we're ignoring those, quite literally ignoring them. So if we are assuming that Terran's expanding, these types of aggressive strikes hit at like seven or so, hit it like eight. 
in this range post 630. I think is a very fair way to put it. So in this circumstance, MVP, actually I will come back and just note that MVP builds that factory the instant he has the gas to. I mean, look at that, just plummeting down to two. The only thing that delayed his gas was, well, the expansion and this reactor. Or excuse me, the only thing that delayed this factory was the expansion and the reactor. So most Terran players get the early expand up, and then they maybe plan to do an attack, Maybe not, but it will still converge on doing some kind of uh, medevac mid-game. So we see this. This is a very cute little push. MVP is doing uh, a two-step push. Step one is to advance very far forward. We're noting that, again, it's hitting post-630. But the real cutesy harassment that comes in with the medevac... I know this is a little late, but this medevac should get there at around, like, 730. And this is how Protosses think of the matchup. I want to note a couple of key things. At six minutes when this push began, most of the early pushes that of course have an expansion attached to them are only going to be able to hit at the front. This medevac that's coming up, again, will be able to be done at 7 and can get to the back of our base around 7.30. Again, I want you to note those timings. With an early expand, plays with the medevac come at around 7.30, and not much sooner, 7 to 8, definitely after 6.30. I want to just smash that into your head, definitely after 6.30, definitely after 6.30. Look at the, the tone of this sort of play from MVP. This is something that many Terran players will do. They will move in with the medevac and Nothing has really drastically changed uh, from Alicia's standpoint. Alicia's basically like, well, all right, I need to focus on my positioning. I need to make sure my observers can spot these. I need to make sure I'm watching my minimap. I need to make sure that my mothership core is in a comfortable position to photon overcharge a necessary nexus. And all this really is effectively doing is making the Protoss player be defensive. It can kill the Protoss, but it's not forcing anything too dramatic from the Protoss. And I always define this word, I will define it again. Forcing is when you do a play that if your opponent doesn't respond in a very specific way, he dies. So we call it forcing because we are assuming our opponent will play intelligently and get up the um, specific defense, and therefore he's forced to do something. Most classically, if I'm Zerg and I build a whole bunch of Mutalisks, you, the opponent, are forced to get a lot of anti-air. Really simple. Really simple. So, this only forces passive play. It doesn't force anything with the buildings. And like we were talking about from the Terran point of view, all things converge onto medevac play. Doing a little bit of this jazz, and yeah, nice. Got some marines up. Maybe doing a little bit of cute annoyingness with the medevac. Stop forcing the Protoss player to do too much other than reposition his things. The next stage of almost all Terran players play is to get this command center up for the third while doing this medevac harassment. To then queue up engineering bay with armory to do all sorts of cool upgrades. Here is just so damn common. And as we step into this mid game, we, the Terran player, are going to apply some pressure to delay the third, but mainly, we are trying to get these upgrades up and running. Come on, MVP, get your upgrades up and running so I look cool. Come on, MVP. There we go. Everything up to about 11 minutes is... this is a very standard look. Some of the key things to note, we can do damage here. Why try to do this? Well, because it's gonna, it is going to force some amount of observers out of our opponent. It's also going to allow us to stay alive. Why do this medevac harassment at this stage of the game? Because Protoss then has to stay defensive. Protoss, as we can see, doesn't have a lot of units. He's still building up a lot of his infrastructure. So there we go. We now have a really standard framework for Terran versus Protoss from the Terran point of view. And it begins with stay alive to get an expansion, 
Maybe do some attacking, maybe not, just to keep him back. The attack that MVP did is basically to stay alive. Uh, if you want to play defensively to stay alive too, then that's cool too. And then the third big thing is his medevac convergence into tech. Getting the marine medevac to keep the opponent back so we can get upgrades in command center. Now, from the Protoss point of view, we now get the opportunity to see exactly why some of the timings for Protoss exist. Here is the standard Protoss model. So we're using this to again get a sense of what players are doing in this matchup. So if you're Alicia, you're thinking, well, okay, I need to be aware that he could do some pressure with, you know, proxy marines, but that's fine, I have the mothership core. He might want to consider doing something like Reaper harassment, that's fine. But by and large, what most people are doing is moving out with this probe very quickly and expanding, generally before a uh, engineering bay can go down at all. Using the mothership core to be the defensive tool. And then around this time, getting a stalker in case of Reaper, but for the most part, throwing dudes back in gas. All right, cool, we are defended. Well, hell, most Terran players are trying to play uh, really defensively, but just in case, we're going to move around with the Mothership core. But this Stalker is the only thing that Protoss has really built early on. Look at how early this Robo is. I'm actually going to note two very nice, critical timings for our analysis today. 3.30 is about when this Nexus goes down. The Robo Bay goes down at around 4.45. 445. Now, if we can identify our Terran opponent doing some kind of expand play, we know that we don't need to worry about anything until much later. We know we don't need to worry about anything till around, geez, 7, 730 for drops. And around really 7 for big hits at the front. So what most Protosses are doing is they're saying, well, sweet, I have like a 90-second window to stay alive. I might build a couple Stalkers, I might build a Sentry, but this is where I'm going to take some huge, bold risk, because there's no gigantic attack that Terrans can really kill me with. Sure, there's this sort of stuff, but no big deal, Photon Overcharge at the front. Oh, dear me, I will reposition stuff at the back, and I will still go hog wild with these crazy upgrades. And now we have our classic power in Protoss. Chrono boosting lots of probes, almost up to the money 44 amount. And some good positioning, and great. 830. Not a lot of infrastructure. Um, we haven't gone down the Robotech, but we do have 1-1 one, one as Protoss. We do have a Twilight Council almost done. We do have three gates. We do have a Robo facility done at 830. Allow me to just remind you of these times, because we will swiftly be moving on to Supernova versus Trap. 3.30, this is down. 4.45, the Robo is down. And by eight minutes or so, some pretty healthy stuff is out. 40 probes are out. Nifty. Let's take a look at what Supernova is going to do in the opening stage, and we'll not only get a sense of exactly what it is, but because we have this nice foundation laid down by, you know, looking at those games, we now know the magnitude of awesomeness of it. <laughs> Again, doing doing damage. If, if you ever say something like, well, I did this play to do some damage, then you're not, you're not being clear. You need to do something. It's like, I need to kill workers because... He's going to then invest in rebuilding drones, which allows me to do a push. Or I'm going to kill workers, which will make him rebuild workers so I can take an expansion. These kinds of things. You want to have like a... So that's what this little start was all about. Oh yes, the little start. Normally we'd be getting close to taking a break, but boy did I start this daily late because I was watching Chad... MF Jones. Now Supernova is building the supply depot on 10 at the front. 
and is sending this happy time SCV out very early to build a proxy barracks. Now this looks like it's going to be really cheesy. It's very easy to view this as a cheese play, but Supernova is not intending it for it to be that. We're just going to see some really useful times. Again, this is Supernova versus Trap from the WCS Korea games. Oh, and I just wanted to note one thing. If you actually go on over to day nine, no, 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 day nine dot TV. Here we go. Um, if you head on over there, where you'll see the home thing, I have links to all the VODs and uh, the the players themselves from WCS. If you wanted to check those out. Anyways. So right off the bat, Supernova is going to be going straight for a Reaper. Now, if we think about this, if you're investing in gas really early, I mean, there is not a lot of SCVs mining. Uh, there's actually 10 SCVs mining. I'm not sure this one... I guess that's a new fresh recruit. <laughs> so there's 11 SCVs mining. I mean, if you compare this to the Protoss, Protoss is doing amazingly better than us. So if we're investing that much in gas, we better use it. That's the first thing I thought when we were watching this game, but watch how excellently Trap times this out. Also note that Trap has been scouted. Or excuse me, Trap has scouted Supernova. He sees what is up. Now, immediately, we're starting to see Trap is forced to build this Zealot as a result of this. Forced to. And why is that? Because... The Reaper arrives as the Cybernetics Core finishes. So, even if we chrono boost out a Stalker, that's 30 whole seconds that the Reaper has free to deal damage in our main base. So, alright. When did the, the Protosses normally expand? Well, gosh, 330. Sometimes as late as 410, but wow. We've already blown way past that. Supernova has done quite a number on Trap already. There's some other things going on back in the main base that we're going to ignore for now. We're just going to look at the tactical play at this front. Now, there's not a lot of direct damage being dealt. In fact, Supernova has killed off a worker and won't even get this Zealot. However, a Zealot and a Stalker and a Mothership Corps were all forced Technically, 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 you can get away without the Mothership Core. But if your opponent went for double barracks, then you'd be in a lot of trouble with a single Stalker. So, of course, Trap has to sort of account for that possibility. Second Stalker uh, is coming up. And cool, we see this factory going down. Thus far, we have already seen, wow, Trap has absolutely no expansion and is broke has absolutely no robo-facility and is broke. Cannot get any of those things up. So indeed, this Protoss player is hella behind what he would ordinarily want to be. We have yet another degree of forcing. This proxy factory is designed to force Trap to have a robo-bay. It's very common for players to do things like get over eager and just throw down a bunch of gateways and try to apply pressure. However, this will just outright kill a player who does that. So suddenly, and it's most clear if we come from Supernova's point of view, suddenly Supernova, who very smartly does this build on this map where he has this big, wide, reaperable ridge to work with, hell, even over on this side. He's getting like full scouting information, man. Widow Mine number one actually botches a little bit. It burrows a smidge too late. Notice how stupidly fortunate Trap was. I mean, if the Reapers moved up here, they'd be able to see up. Um, where are the Reapers? Oh, there they are. Yeah, I mean, the Reapers would be able to just gently jockey up this ramp and see that there's units, and the burrow would have happened early. How fortunate that Trap managed to stay alive there. But even so, we're seeing, wow, this this robo-facility got started at six minutes. 
This Nexus is way mega unreal late. Like super duper duper freaking late. And these uh, mines are still being kind of annoying. So when we get to the 8 minute mark, we had what, 40 some odd probes for Alicia? Here, this gas is delayed. The probe count is delayed. The probe count's actually at 32 instead of the over 40. I know that the from the Terran side of things, we can easily say, well, oh gosh, we're, we're pretty dang far behind too ourselves. Our expansion is up very late. But a lot of the infrastructure that the Terran player wants up by 10 is actually on the way. We can see the noticeable impact of this. Alicia at 8 minutes had two forges halfway done, Twilight Council finishing up three gates and a robo long done. We can see the tangible effect of this, the biggest one of which is that a whole lot of gateway units were made that aren't really going to be particularly useful early on. That's the biggest effect of this uh, type of push. So last one thing that I want to throw out from looking at this build is that Supernova does another really cool play that goes along with this. As his Reaper is building, oops, dang, hit the wrong button, that's fine. As the Reaper is building, he gets a second barracks up, actually gets the second barracks up before his second depot, and begins just producing Marines one at a time. It kind of has a funky look to it, but Almost everything that the Protoss wants to throw back at you, such as this Mothership Core, early Zealot Pressure, barely has three Marines up in time to repel this Mothership Core, almost pick it off. And the Barracks just floats on back. So cool. Kind of hilariously, because we get this factory so early, and because we get this gas so early, Supernova is sacrificing some amount of workers. Supernova is sacrificing some economy. But the core bits of infrastructure, the three barracks, stim, and of course a starport, can still happen because the factory's up, getting an engineering bay. This is a little bit late, but there is the starport coming up, and we'll pause eight minutes. So We've seen probably the first half of this unfolding. We've seen um, what some of the standards are in the TVP matchup uh, via watching Alicia versus MVP. And in this one, we're actually able to state the tangible effects that are happening. This attack really delayed the expo and forced our opponent to go down the robo observer path. And of course, because our opponent invested so much in these gateway units early on and delayed this for so long, no way he's going to have a lot of gateways. I'll leave it at that, because when we come back, we're going to use all these facts to construct our mid-game plan as Supernova. Bam! Yeah! I nailed the shit out of that part one. Yes! On a break. Let's listen to some Ludique. <laughs> 